Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my newly renovated war room in Prince George, British Columbia. Before I show it to you, I just wanted to show you how much friggin' snow we have out there. Look at that, it's almost up to the top of my fence. I tell you, I am getting so sick of shoveling snow. Look at the roof over there. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Hasn't snowed this much since probably the 80s. Usually we don't get as much snow as we used to, but anyway. So let's just uh let's just close this and get rid of winter. And let the camera adjust here. There we go. Okay, we'll step back a bit and show it to you. So gone is the purple from, from Barney. <laughs> And uh, I painted it green. Uh, I didn't want it too dark of green and I didn't want it too light. I wanted kind of an army feel to it, but uh, you know, nothing too dull or drab or shiny, you know, like just kind of mute, you know, and that's I think that's what, what it came out as. So I'm really happy about that. I'll just show you around here. There's the Anzac hat, or some of you getting to know it as. Uh, the winning hat because I throw the names in there when I do a contest. I'll, I'll, I'll take you around and show you more when I get there. I took out the closet doors here. Um, like I'll, uh, they weren't doing anything for me. And it, this kind of makes the room bigger because uh, uh, like before I'd have to open and close and you know like side to side ch -ch 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 -ch, trying to open and close doors just to get a few pieces. Oh, this is the wrong side of the closet. Then I'd have to close it and go to the other side, you know, and um, anyway, so I put this table that was at the end of uh, my other, t my old table. I put that in here and this is for storage as well. Like my 1914 game, all of it is in here. And you know, the map is in the corner there in, in that box. Um, my, all of my maps, like I don't even open these boxes anymore unless I need old pieces. Uh, I, all my maps are roll up maps. Um, so yeah, you know, all my games in there. So it'd be easier to access now. And, uh, the floor, I've redone the flooring too. I tried to get the flooring, uh, to look a, a bit rustic. Uh, I really like this one. Um, and then of course the table, the table is, uh, everything I've done here, here, let me just set this down. Okay. Everything I've done here is, uh, is to try and uh, be able to, to put a bigger map in, in here. I'll, I'll move this up. This is the big map. Um, I, I didn't think I was going to have enough room, so I had to put a lot of thought into what I was doing. And it, it was all to do with how can I fit a bigger map in here. So I, I needed uh, not, not just the table, but uh, the room to be able to conform to the game instead of the game conforming to the room. So what I've done, one of the things, is I've raised up the table. Like, I don't know if you can see it, but this table is a lot higher than that thing over there. The table used to be as high as this. And if you look underneath, this is my old table right here. It's it's not on the same uh, stands down there. Like I, I built a frame for it before it was just sitting on an, an old uh, makeshift table. But uh, that's the old table there. And this is, uh, this is uh, a newer piece. Let me just show you what, what's in here. I've got these clips on here to hold the map down. This is pretty neat though. This is um, plywood that comes finished. Both sides are like this. Like it's, 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 uh, it's, it's already finished plywood, right? And I had to put the veneer, like you use an iron and, and you iron on the veneer on the outside. And so I had to put that on. Um, anyway, uh, I wanted it taller for a couple of reasons. One was what I said before how uh, I needed more room and uh, so I needed storage underneath the table and you can see as I pull the chairs back you can see that there's on, on all sides of the table there's there's uh, units and things like that in there and the other is because I wanted the table taller um, I'm getting tired of hunching over like if, if you're if you're using a table this size and most tables are 30 inches high like your dining room table if you go up and measure right now it's probably 30 inches high that's the standard height for a table and this table here is is 35 inches um, and so I don't have to hunch down like here I'll just I'll just move this over like I'm, I'm standing normally right here you know and it, I, if I want to lean on my my arms like this you know I'm, I'm totally comfortable like that um, I'm not hunched way over 
you know, uh, trying to play a game. And that's important. You know, it's not a big deal if you have to do that. You know, okay, I'll hunch down and I'll, I'll do something. But if you're doing that for, you know, 10, 12 hours a day for two solid days, because that's what it's going to take to play this guy, this game, then, I mean, that's just way too much hunching over, right? Um, so the, I tried to build the table a little taller, and it, it accomplishes two things. One, you can stand and play the game. Uh, for one thing, you're not going to be able to sit and reach across the table. So when you take your turn, you're, you're going to want to stand. Here, let me let me just put the camera down. Okay, so I'm standing here. So I can reach up to Germany from here. I can't reach any farther than that because this board is, is four um, four feet wide. There's just no way uh, uh, that I can reach across there. I could reach the Mediterranean easily. If I was sitting down, then I would be stretching to reach the Mediterranean, right? But because I'm standing, I can reach further. And so I, I assume that when a person takes their turn, they're, they're, they're going to be standing um, to, to play the game just so that they can move around. Like if you're going to put pieces up there on the top of the, on the, top of the world there for, and you're sitting on this side, like if you were sitting here and you were the British player, you'd have to get up and go to the other side of the table to put units over there anyway. So you're going to have to move around the board um, to take your turn. But um, you're also going to want to sit, like you're not going to want to stand for 10 to 12 hours either. So I went and got some new chairs from Ukrainian Tire, or at least that's what I call it here in Canada, we call it Canadian Tire. And these are bar stools, but they're really comfortable and they're adjustable. They, they swivel and they're adjustable so they go up and down so that, um, you know, like you could sit down low and put your legs under the table. Or you could you could raise the raise it up if it's not your turn and just kind of kick back and and you have a, a nice view like a, like I could get this almost as high as if I was standing here so I, I can be above the table and looking down on it. Okay. Well, let's while well, we've got this out, let's just take a look under here. So um, underneath, how how I got it higher, what I did was um, I have these these blocks here. Where are they? See these blocks. Um, so this is, this is, uh, from my legs, the, the legs of the table. Um, I had four of these, uh, four, four legs that were made out of this material. This is, uh, um, what is this? I think it's uh, cedar. And so, um, uh, they cut, uh, I cut them and I had some extra. I had about 14 inches left <clears throat> times, uh, two. And so I thought, okay, well, that's what I could use to raise my table up with. So I cut these, I cut six of these, uh, four, four inch lengths. Um, and so what I've done is I've placed them here. Let me see where this one is. So this one, there, there's one right here and in between the boards, like here, if you take a look down there, there's one right there, right? So there's one there and then there'd be one in this corner and then in the other two corners up there and then one right dead center. There, there's one of these right in here. And so that's all that is separating, that's all that's separating these two boards is, is those things there. And it, they're all screwed in and everything. Like I can move the table around just by, just by moving the top of the table, right? Um, I don't want to be moving around too much, of course, like uh, unless there's two people, uh, it would just wear your table out faster. But that's what's separating the two layers of the board. It's just five of these pieces right here. And um, that's the way I envisioned it. Like I, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about. It. So everything underneath this map here is storage everywhere. Like I can even store stuff right up the middle of the map here. But um, I wouldn't store anything in there that I'm using. Like if I'm playing this game, I can store Axis and Allies stuff in the middle of the map here. Or if I'm playing Axis and Allies, then I can take the Global War stuff and I, and I can uh, store it in here. And then the stuff that I need, I store along the edges there. And I replaced my shelving, so I've got shelves here. So you have some space over here. To, uh, like uh, all this stuff doesn't need to be up here. I've just put it there for now, but it, it, it'll quite probably be down on the board and I'll be using it. And of course the player that's sitting over here uh, or standing over here can use this to put their drink down. And um, you're thinking, well, where the hell is this person supposed to put their drink? Like there's, I can't put a table or yeah, I can't put a table over there. <laughs> well, look at this. Uh, ha, ha, ha. My son and I, we built this table and we thought we were pretty smart building these things here. So that you could put your drink over there. Or you could, you know, like you could, you could sort your pieces over there or do whatever you're doing, right? But look at that. 
Because I tell you, the, like the, the map goes right to the edge of the board. And if you ever come to my house and play a game here, if you ever put your, your drink down on my map, I will go all Samuel L. Jackson on you. <laughs> you know, from Pulp Fiction there. Furious anger! And <laughs> give you the speech and then give you a stone cold stunner, you know what I mean? So anyway, uh, that, that's pretty neat. So there's one of these on both sides. There's one here and there's one uh, right directly across the table from it um, on the other side. And I meant for it to come out further than that. Um, like the, the, the shelf itself is probably in, in here, right? But I didn't know how long of a slider to get. Like there's a slider underneath here. So uh, it slides uh, like it's connected to the shelf and it's connected to the table underneath. And, so, and, they're, and, they're, and then they slide together, right? But uh, I, didn't, I didn't know how long a piece to get. So anyway, <laughs> who knew you need to get a much longer one? I think I got a 16 inch one. But that doesn't bring it out 16 inches. But anyway, that, that's pretty cool that you can do that and that it's retractable. And then so you've got all your pieces underneath there. What you'll do is you'll take your pieces out. You'll open it up. You'll, you'll take what you need and everything. And then when you're done, you put it back away. Or put it on, put it on the shelf, you know, like well, while that player's taking their turn. Because, you know, you're taking pieces off and you might be throwing them back in the thing, right? So there you go. That's how uh, that's how you can do it in this small space. So what else do we got? Um, yeah, I tried to. Um, I'm gonna be using even the walls. Like I'm trying to turn uh, the small space from a negative into a positive. Um, and so one of the things you can do is because you're so close to the walls, you know, like you're not a table in the middle of the room and the walls a long ways away. You can use the walls. Like for this, uh, I've showed you this already, but. Um, that's a, a magnetic board and you know like here uh, so you know like it, you can move them along and these things aren't even aren't even fastened to there it's just the magnets that are holding them on there there's enough magnets on there that they're holding and these also have magnets in behind them and that's you know the turn order and if I play in a different game then I could just rearrange those right you know like if I'm playing Axis and Allies then I just rearrange those to the right turn order for Axis and Allies um, that's why I didn't want to just fix them on there because I don't just play one game. Up top here, this is pretty neat. My son got me this stuff last year for Father's Day. Uh, this is a bunch of, he saw, he saw it at a, it wasn't a garage sale, it was kind of, um, this thing downtown anyway, all kind of little shops and everything that they set up out on the street, uh, street vendors and stuff like that. And it's a whole bunch, you got a whole bunch of Canadian Army stuff. So, you know, like there's the water bottle and there's a, a thing in behind, there's a, um, a box for your ammo. Uh, there's a couple of these, uh, I think these are arm patches, not, not for going around your arm, but for going around the strap on your shoulder. So this is all Canadian Army stuff. Let me just take you to the other side there. I want to show you some of the things that are on there. So I got a lot of the stuff over here. So like you've got your, your gas mask there, right? And uh, I'm not sure what these things are. I'll show it to you. Maybe somebody from the Canadian Army can tell me what all this stuff is. Decontaminating agent. Decontaminating agent. Anyway, um, and there's a belt here. And it's a, a paper chemical agent detector. I'm not sure what that is. But all this stuff is, uh, it, it, this is just paper. I'm not sure how you detect chemical agents with it, but um, this is all stuff that you'd be issued if you were in the Canadian Army um, a long time ago. So, and here, still, still have the old card here. This is for the mask. It's a little worn, this card, but it tells you how to use the mask and everything. And uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> when you're in Canada, everything is in uh, English and in French. So there's the French side of it there. Um, and then uh, there's this stuff here. This uh, came with it as well, and that's um, it's anti-dimming for your mask. You, you wet the tip of your finger, and it tells you what to do there. Um, there's a cloth inside of here. So anyway, just stuff that that a Canadian soldier would would uh, would be issued. Um, and there's the uh, there's a, another of those. I, I believe they're arm patches. Uh, maybe somebody can can comment if they if it, if it's something different than that. And there's the pack in behind there and. Just all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then the Marley speaker up front there. <laughs> but they don't issue one of those in the Canadian Army. That's, uh, I can play, like I can go into my computer room and um, and 
put on a playlist or something and and the sound will come out over here because it's a Bluetooth speaker, right? So let's just take a look at some of these things here. Like what I did before was I had one of these things, you know, and I've got all the stuff in it, right? This is my Axis and Allies one, right? Uh, but these, uh, like I said, uh, the, there's no room on the, this table. I used to have room at the end of my table over here um, that didn't have a map on it. And so I could put all my facilities and chips and things like that in a container like this. I actually had a bigger one than that. So I can't do that now because there, there is no, there's no edge of the table. Like the edge of the table is the floor, right? So what I've done is I went to the, the dollar store and I've got a whole bunch of these things and they're really cheap. Like I think you get two of these for a buck, you know, and you get one of the, one of these bigger ones here for a buck, right? So there's all my flight stands. And here's my damage chips and you know, like the little damage marker, right? The smoking, the smoking damage. And there's, there's chips here and there's chips here. And I've got some on the other side as well. Um, I haven't put them on the table, but the reason I got them like this is because, you know, like I, I wouldn't keep these on the table, but these, like, um, you know, like you could keep these on the table and you could pass them over to the guy over here, you know, and then, you know, like he can just set them down over here. They're not in the way, right? But they're not so big that they're taking up the table. So you could keep these on the table if you wanted. You know, you could sit them here. That's not in the way, right? Um, uh, uh, so that's what I did with these things here. Now the dice, I've also got these type of containers and what I've done here, here, this is the dice for this game. So this thing here is great and we've been using these for a while now. Uh, I bought these things a while ago and we've been using them because they fit inside of here just perfectly. We've been using them to play Axis and Allies and when I'm playing the Axis and Allies, like here's the Axis and Allies dice, the hit dice from Sireblood, right? And uh, you need a, a, a bunch of other dice in there. Uh, with the numbers on them for strategic bombing and things like that. And also you're going to need to do that in this game. So I've got a couple of six-sided dice, but for the most part, this is 12-sided dice in here, right? But what you do, you take that out of there. Okay, I need, uh, I need uh, this dice, this dice, and this dice, and then you can roll them, right? Um, why I've got so many is I'm going to try and develop a system. Uh, there, I don't think there's any way you can use hit dice in this game. Uh, even though I haven't played it yet, but you, you just look at the rules and you know the. and I've used hit dice for a while now and, and I can just see there's going to be no way you can use hit dice because there's targeted unit selection in this game. It's not good enough to know that you hit something. Uh, not everything has targeted unit selection, like uh, some of them do, some of them don't, right? But um, you, you need to know what kind of a hit you got. It's not just enough to know that you hit the thing. It's uh, did you hit it good enough to target what hit. So. Um, there's all different kinds of dice and, and uh, all different kinds of values. Here, let's just take a look at the thing here. I'm not going to get too far into this because uh, I'm talking about it. I'm just going to show you quickly. So everything, uh, you know, like you see, there's a zero, uh, uh, there's one, there's two, there's three. Just like any other chart that you've seen, right? This is actually a pretty nice chart. There's the attacker and there's the defender on the other side. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll assign dice to these different columns, right? Um, I'll assign dice to these different columns and different colored dice, right? And uh, and that way I can roll them all at once, right? Um, but it, like I'll have to do it separately for uh, units that um, that have targeted selection, right? So that I know that uh, like if I'm rolling, where's the tactical bomber? A tactical bomber has a targeted selection which is different and which is not the same as a mountain infantry even though they both roll at five so let's say like i can't just roll two dice at five i need to know which one of those is a tactical bomber so what i'll do is is this one will be different than this one right and i'm probably going to need more colors and so you'll have a, a whole mitt full of dice right like let's say this is these are the units that i have then i'll just know okay now these ones these ones have to hit on six or less so that's a hit uh, these ones hit on four or less, so that's a hit. These ones hit on five or less, so that's a miss. This one uh, hits at seven or less, so that's a miss. And this one was a hit, you know, like it, that's the, it's going to work that way. But it's not going to be as easy to do as hit dice. Hit dice, you can see, okay, that's how many hits I got. This, you're still going to have to look at it. But I, I think it will speed up the game. Um, I wouldn't necessarily use this system if you were playing against a new player because it's hard enough for them to know you know like how many 
uh, what, what each unit does, but to, to try to teach them to, to do all this dice system and everything. But if you've got your, a gaming group, um, then, uh, then I think that uh, developing a system like this will work. And I got all of these dice at Historical Board Gaming. Like these are all the colors of dice that, that Doug sells at Historical Board Gaming. So I bought a, a whole bunch of each and I bought them for both. Like there's, the, there's this one here and there's also a dice tray um, over there on the other side and over behind my coffee cup over there. So you'll each have a dice tray and you can move it around, right? Um, you can move it around anywhere, just wherever there's not, there isn't any dudes. Just like the other things, you can move those around. And then when, uh, when I'm playing Axis and Allies, then I'll just take those dice out of there and put these dice in there and take these dice and put them in here because this thing's not going to fit in here, right? <laughs> it's just, um, I just found when we were moving around, right? It's okay, you're, you're fighting a battle over here, so you got the dice tray over here. Okay, we got to move down here. You got to pass the dice to your partner. Now it's his turn. Well, we found um, we were just uh, we were putting them in in uh, in those things there, and and using the dice tray. And we were finding that oh, we forgot the dice, so you brought the dice tray over. So then you got to go back over and you got to get the dice, and then you got to bring the dice back. And you know, but this if you just okay, I'm done. You put the dice back in there. Okay, uh, next guy, it's his turn. So you take the dice over here. You take it out, okay, I got one of these, I got two of these, and one of these, okay, here we go, and you roll them. You know what I mean? It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna work out really well, I think. Uh, but I'm, I'm not going to tell you exactly how I'm going to do it right now, because I don't know right now. I'm going to have to play the game a bit in order to come up with uh, a system of how to do it, right? So, anyway... Um, what else do we got in here? Oh, there's my picture of me and Larry. I'm looking for, I, I took some pictures while I was on my holiday and I have a picture taken in uh, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. Uh, I, was, I was talking with Sire the other day about it, asking him if, if he had the picture, if it was me. And he said that it was me, the waiter, we gave the waitress my camera and she took the picture. And so it's, I mean, we, we were, you know, like we had our glasses raised and we're toasting each other, right? It was a drink with Sire. So I'd like to get a picture, you know, done about that size and, and put it up somewhere, you know, put it up anywhere. And it's a drink with Sire. <laughs> uh, but uh, I can't seem to find the picture. Um, I have a an external drive, but my computer's not seeing my external drive right now. So I'm going to have to work on that. I friggin' hate computers. They're, they're, always, they're always doing that, that kind of shit to me. Anyway, I don't know that there's much more to see. Like here, let me just show you up the middle of the table there. Uh, like uh, you can you can put units in, uh, or like th these are the things that I don't use much, um, but that I will need to access at some point in time, extra units and stuff. But the units that I'm using will all be on the sides there. These chairs are really comfy. I tell you, really really comfortable and an adjustable height and everything. And I like the fact that they swivel. You know that's nice. And it's your turn you just push your chair up to there and then you can stand there and you can take your turn right anyway that's the war room oh there was one thing i did miss i can see that now a couple things actually these clips these clips are great i've seen uh, hunter jones using these except for he, he used smaller ones and he was just using them to clip his boards together uh I think his Global 40 boards could have been a different game. But anyway, I thought, hey, those clips are great, you know, uh, if I was using boards and I never had a need for them. But uh, I used two-sided tape on my Axis and Allies game, like that board that you've seen that was on my table for the longest time. Man, to try to get that stuff off, I, I tried a whole bunch of And finally, the way I got the two-sided tape off of there was uh, WD-40. <laughs> anyway, I was never, ever going to do that again, right? But yeah, these clips are working great. Um, what I did with this map and, and uh, what I recommend you do if you get one of these maps, like it came rolled up in this case over here, right? And it's rolled up, it's, uh, it's got the map on the inside. So you would, you, would, you would roll it up this way, right? So that all this is on the inside. But what happens is um, when you take it out, then the, the corners are all curled up, right? They're all curled up and on, both, on both ends. So what I did was I took it out of there and I rolled it the other way. So that this part would be facing out instead of in like it, it shipped like that. So this part was facing out and I left it for a week because, you know, you, I don't think you need to leave it for a week, but uh, you, leaving it for a day would be fine or even a, just a few hours probably. 
but uh, so it sat it, like it was it was it, it wanted to go down instead of up so it sat pretty pretty good already but uh, these clips are going to help hold it into place um, and uh, I think that's uh, I, I think that's going to be good like the, it's because it will curl up over time with the ten, the changes in temperature and everything I don't think it'll curl up this way if it does I can always throw some clips down on the side but uh, definitely it would curl up on the ends uh, over time and these things here this is your your shipping facility I just put these off uh, I can, you can put these anywhere like I could put them here or whatever right but uh, there's nothing going on down nothing going on down here and I, I purchased an extra one off of uh, Doug at Historical War Gaming because I thought, you know what, why not have one on both sides of the table? Normally you only get one of these and, and, and so you got it's just piled up with ships from both sides. But I can't reach it when I'm sitting over there, right? So um, I thought, you know, one on each side of the table would be better. So the common turn will sit over here with the axis and then the allies will, will sit over there. and. Uh, and, and they could put their ships on there and Russian ships will be mixed in with the Axis ships over here. Um, yeah, I think that's just about everything. We seem to get the money and the, and, the, and the chips down at the end of the board there. That should be good enough. <laughs> Here's the neutrals. Ooh. Even the neutrals got their own, got their own thing and, and uh, the extra facilities. Mo most of the facilities are are like the the factories are in their you know like the american factories are in with the americans and things like that um but there is one more uh thing with the facilities but it, it doesn't need to be up once you set the facilities down on this board you know like if you're gonna buy one well you know we'll just reach out to the table and grab you one so I, i've got it over here you just take it out and here's all my facilities in here you know like i've got my coastal guns and and my Atlantic wall. I did a video on these yesterday, uh, these uh, miniatures yesterday. Um, and also I uh, got some stuff from Ebar, like there's there's the naval bases there and and uh, the shipyards. And there's uh, the new air bases that I got from Combat Miniatures. So all that's there, and I think what I'm gonna do um, I'm going to try it anyway. I'll, I'll put these e cities on, but only the victory cities. There are, sorry, not the victory cities, only the capital cities. There's no need to put uh, Stalingrad, for instance. Like, victory, the, the, the cities, the victory cities have no significance in this game. Uh, they're, they're not even called victory cities. Uh, you, you look here and you see where there's circles or semicircles. Those are the cities. And the significance of the cities in this game is uh, their modifiers for your rolling. You know, sort of your plus one or minus one or whatever you are, right? We'll get into that when, when we start talking about rules. But the, it's not about how many cities you can capture. It's definitely not about that. So there's no point in putting the, the E-Bar cities onto this map, except for maybe, and I'm going to try it, um, just putting the capital cities on so just because it does it does uh, do something when you take over somebody's capital right uh so like the eiffel tower will be on paris over there and the reichstag will be in, in berlin we'll have the parliament buildings in london and if they get in the way like if i find in that there's uh, there's not enough room then i'll take them off right i still i still have my small ones like i i have a small set of those uh capital cities i've got the bigger set now but i could i could whip out the small set and throw them on as well like they're 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 much smaller you know anyway um over here like the, the it's not obviously not done yet i've got i've got, still got lots of wall space in here and I'm, i'd like to fill it up quite a bit what what i'm what i'm gonna do with this wall over here let me just stand back um there's a, a thread on AxisAndAllies.org in the Global War section where people are sharing their um, their uh, game mates, their player aids that they that they've made up themselves, and there's some really really helpful ones in there. And one of them that I seen that would be cool. It's what it does. Uh, I think it's 18 pages, and it lists every single type of unit that you can buy from Historical War Gaming to play with this game. You know, like whether it's from the America game or what, or you know, uh, um, whether it's an Axis and Allies piece, or whether it's uh, one of the historical board gaming pieces, 
or one of their three d printed pieces everything on there has a value attack defense you know maybe movement facilities obviously don't have a movement but everything is listed this guy's listed absolutely everything and what I did you know instead of having to take out a book and look through it you know trying to find that one unit I spread it all out on a poster and I don't have the poster made up though yet I'm not sure and I don't know if I'm going to share it or not I'm gonna have to ask the guy if if it's okay you know he shared it with with the rest of us so I assume it's okay for me to use it but I don't know if he wants me sharing so I'll have to ask him and I have to make sure that it came out right because it as it stands right now it's just a tiny little blip on my computer you know like you can't even read it right so uh, like I would like it to be three feet tall by four feet wide so that uh, I could sit here maybe and and be able to read you know over here what uh, what that armored car does or something right um, it's gonna have every piece uh, the out of box uh, not why well, I say out of box but just the regular game pieces or the extra pieces that you can throw into this game because there's tons of extra pieces that you can put in this game Anyway, that's one, another way that I'm going to be using this uh, small space, space to my advantage is by putting things on the wall that will help me play the game. Since the walls are so close to you, why not just use them like I did over there, right? And that's what I like to do over here is, is put, that, uh, put that poster once it's done. Um, I've been working on it and that's why I don't have it done right now. I called this morning to see if I could get one done. <laughs> they said it was $54 or something to do it and that's too much. So um, I will wait uh, till another place is open on Monday and, and maybe see if I can get them to do it. And I don't know, like I said, if it's going to come out right. Like it, because I had to move things around and stuff like that, it could be that, that some of those pages are bigger than others. Maybe I stretched them or done something because I, I couldn't just pay, cut and paste them. Normally I had to resize them. And so some of them might be sized completely different than the others. And so I'll see how it comes out. And if it comes out right and the guy's okay, then I will share the file for that so that you could get a poster done as well. Um, uh, if you have the room for it, if you're playing this game in your, in your dining room, I'm pretty sure your wife isn't going to want you to put that poster up as a permanent fixture. But if you have a game room like this, uh, then it would be a great idea. Anyway, I think that's it. Um, I think I showed you everything. Oh, I didn't show you everything. There's one more thing. You know what this is? This is general hand grenade on holidays. <laughs> yeah. That's me. Oh, and there's this thing too. This is going to help me out making videos. I got this at Staples. So this is just uh, like when I'm doing something. Let's say uh, these are all the player rage, right? Let's say let's say I'm doing Germany. Let's throw the Germany card in there so that I can sit there and read the Germany card. And I could even show it to you, right? So this is Germany and this is what they do and blah, blah, blah. You know, you can flip the card around. That's going to help me making videos anyway. And when I'm not making videos, it's a good place to put this stuff. These, these things are all made out of um, out of that menu stuff. I've talked about it before. This is what they make restaurant menus out of. So it's uh, it's not just paper. It's and it's not cardboard and it's not laminated. It's not it doesn't it's not glossy so that you can't read it uh, or that it blinds you when you're trying to make a video of it. So this stuff is great and this thing's going to help out a lot. And now I'm done. Now that's everything. Anyway, that's me in my new war room. And uh, the next set of videos that I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to start with Germany. Like you, you see up there is Germany. And, you know, like I'll just go through the turn order. I, I, I think I dropped that. So it's not all in the right order, I don't think. Anyway, I, I'm going to just go through the turn order and I'm going to show you how I built my global armies. Like I'm going to take them out and I'm going to put them down and, you know, display them and everything. And then I'll start the video and say, okay, this is, uh, this is where I got this piece. And this is what I'm using for this piece because, uh, there's no set, uh, way to, to build your armies for this game. So that's what I'm going to do is, uh, I'll start with Germany and then I will go to whoever's next. And, uh, that, that'll be the videos that I do first. And then after that, I'm not sure if I'm going to start playing or if I'm going to start doing some, um, uh, well, I, I will have to do the map and everything. Like I'll have to show you the map, but, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get right into vi uh, rules videos after that, or if I'm just going to start playing anyway. 
That's me at General Hand Grenade, day one of my holidays. Thank you for joining me in my newly renovated war room. Don't put your drink on my table. Take care, everyone. General Hand Grenade out.